Bonsoir, bonsoir à tous. Good evening, good evening everyone. All of our microphones are on. I'm going to speak loudly enough because it's obviously we're in a large room. I'm so happy to be here this evening. First, I'd like to thank all of our Paris Photo teams who agreed to allow us to meet and they've they've organized this event so wonderfully. So there's a little story behind this in 2019. So we were at the Grand Palais. We had organized uh, a talk on French photography and its image in the world. And I had published something in the textual called 50 Years of Photography in France. And we had Martha Gilly, we had other uh, photographers, we had Olga Smith with us. And we had a lot of questions, we saw a lot of reactions to the paradox between, you know, the, how dynamic the French photography scene was, but also a feeling of uh, having trouble representing it and um, getting it out and getting it to known to the rest of the world. There was a little bit of bitterness, a little bit of tension, and uh, a lot of photographers were uh, we're hoping that that would evolve. But I think that um, two years later now, and this is what's interesting, to see how things have, have uh, progressed, how they're evolving with regard to representation of French contemporary photography throughout the world, geographically, but also with regards to the most contemporary of uh, uh, photographic productions. So three actions that are very different, but are, are symbolic that have taken place. I want to talk about a product that I started at the Pavillon Populaire in Montpellier, which is a follow-up of the, the, the book Textuel. I want to tell you how I designed that exhibition and how it is happening and my logic behind it. And then, secondly, I'm also very pleased to welcome again Olga Smith so for her to discuss her uh, university research and her thesis on French contemporary photography was has been published now since I last uh, saw her. It'll be translated at some point, but we have a historian of contemporary art and photography who is outside of France, but who is specialized in France and its history. We also have Eloise Conessa, who is a um, heritage curator in charge of contemporary photography at the Bibliothèque Nationale de France, so the uh, national French National Library. So she will discuss maybe the specificity of the uh, of French photography uh, with regard to collectors. And then we're just going to have a little chat amongst ourselves. So the first image, I guess, the first idea. Yes, the first image. So um, when this was published in 2019, 50 years of French photography, you know, this work really was all about uh, summarizing and synthesizing um, the work of that, that period. But it also allowed me to uh, approach questions of French photography, post-humanist period, uh, a period that wasn't as well known as it could have been. Uh, but photography had entered into uh, the whole sphere of contemporary art years before, but Gilles Marant, who's the artistic director of the Pavillon Populaire, called me the following year uh, during COVID, during the pandemic, so it was a little bit complicated, but he proposed, uh, he said, you know, an, an, an exhibit really is what we need to uh, get everything to motion, to have this book kind of fulfill its destiny. So I was pleased to uh, be able to accept this invitation uh, for an exhibition, but I don't know if you know the Pavillon, uh, it's a very well-equipped uh, space, uh, 
quite large, but perhaps not large enough to welcome 50 years of French photography and all the all of that uh, all that entails. So, so if we have uh, images from 1968 to 1979, it's really uh, excuse me, 1989. This is when we saw uh, French photography really really uh, have a shift. So at the beginning of our project, we thought that perhaps it would be quite simple. We thought maybe we're going to have an exhibit on French photography in France. We have the collections. We have maybe 90% of photographers are still living. And so this was kind of a false, false. Uh, we had a false sense of security because it was incredibly difficult to set up this uh, exhibit. We had 42 uh, people. We had 250 works. We had about 70 photographers. So to to create, to compose, and to recompose, you know, the whole history of this era. We really had to go through the history of acquisitions of the of the of the editions of all these photos. We went to see museums and the FRAC, the regional centers for photography. So we saw through this truly we, we, we were able to establish a history of acquisitions so they were purchased they were collected and that's a that's the first signal that uh, we wanted to send out in our exhibit that this french photography uh, was never really forgotten it was assisted by public and private collectioners check collectors and collections so we received um, uh, images that were lent, and we had, in 2019, we often heard that, no, uh, French photographers, no one's buying their images. No, that's, from a statistical point of view, that's not true. Uh, French photographers' work is purchased quite often and ex exhibited quite often. So if you want to do a large thematic exhibit, uh, for example, in France, we often have monographic exhibits of French photographers, maybe thematic exhibits, but we almost never have, okay, let's say never have exhibits that represent a, a national uh, a national scene. Uh, what do I mean by represent? I mean, uh, collect, put things together, um, create links between these images, uh, show when and how uh, the movement was accelerated or, or, or was slowed at what time and where. And represent also means um, showing uh, photos from this generation. That was a fascinating, a fascinating uh, thing to do. You know, in reality, there's a social photography practice that's, that was very strong in the 70s and 80s in France. And you can't forget that. And we show that in this exhibit. Uh, so at this at this point, what we did miss throughout those years, and I think that's changing though, is to doing things together. So I'll give you a silly example. You put who next to who, for example, when you're creating kind of a path uh, through the exhibit. How do we do that? And I thought to myself, well, there are maybe two French photographers, the better, best known photographers, the best, the most present maybe in, in, in public collections. I'm thinking of Raymond de Pardon, for example, someone else who's well known, but who's kind of uh, not very uh, well known. I mean, Bernard Plossu and Raymond de Pardon. I mean, we've never shown them together, but it's. It, I find that it could be quite interesting to do so. So, looking at you know daily life, and in Raymond de Pardion's famous book from 1969, notes, he kind of uh, performs a psychological analysis of uh, of how he's feeling 
leurs œuvres ont mis en jeu Oh, they've never met, obviously, but they examine the same types of questions and issues. On fait dialoguer, par exemple, dans le regard posé sur l'histoire dans les années 1980. So, for example, in the 1980s, Sophie Weber, her work on Beirut, how did she decide to go after the bombings and events that took place to look at? Architect, uh, architecture ruins as, 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 as pain in a historical context. So we have some incredible photographers that photograph memory. You know, I think that it, it, it's quite interesting to look at the relationship between the work of these artists. They proposed alternatives to contemporary history, which would, was uh, reportage, journalism, and if there is ever a moment or something that could take place, that's the, the reportage model is no longer sufficient uh, uh, for photographers. So we start with reportage, we started in 68. But how did this model make photographers unhappy? Uh, photographers found themselves, you know, uh, having to show images that they had not chosen uh, with the text that they would either be drafting or choose. So when did photographers become authors? So this is a big topic in the, the 80s. So when is subjectivity, you know, being subjective going to be more more important than being objective? When is that going to be having uh, more value, uh, writing and text, etc., than the distance uh, and being published in the press? So those years are going to really open the floodgates to different experiences and also social practices um, of photography, obviously documentary practices, uh, for example, uh, the Viva Agency, the beginning of the 70s, where photographers choose to work collectively on long-term projects. I'm not going to give you an entire history of French photography uh, tonight, at least of those years, tonight. But I'd like to insist on the fact that this exhibit, which is truly a, 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 a thematic uh, examination of that entire period, uh, and there are specific issues that are linked, and there are solutions that, that answer all of those those questions and, and, and issues. I'd like to for Jacqueline, who maybe is exhibiting here. Jacqueline told me she's about uh, 80 years old, so she's been involved in, in, in French photography for 50 years. So it's funny because we all worked together toward the same thing, but we didn't know that. So having to, you know, reshuffle the cards and trying to find a, a different way of doing things. And, and we were talking about this with Olga earlier. So the intellectual dimension of French photography because all these photographers have obviously a, 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 a critical uh, sense. Uh, people who had very, you know, opposing political views, social, very different social ambitions. Certain photographers who wanted to stay and work collectively were very. Uh, who, who were great social advocates. There were all, uh, all types of approaches and all types of photographers, but to represent story uh, allows them to exist. So we can we can do all kinds of you know uh, monographies, visual exhibition, but I don't know a lot of that unless they're collectively. But you know sometimes we have to do that. Uh, against uh, photographers, maybe against uh, their wishes and desires. But I know that some photographers want to stay, you know, alone in their own uh, in their own corner. But no, it's difficult to write about history, write about photography. And sometimes you have to have to work against photographers, not with them. You have to, you know, you have to dialogue. You have to create dialogue. Sometimes I had to 
kind of force photographers to, you know, get out of their heads, get out of their egos uh, to be able to weave this, this rich tapestry of uh, history collectively. So that exhibit will be open until mid-January. It's going to be free entrance. So we have some, we've had so many visitors. We're very happy with the, the reaction that we've received. And so when Olga contacted me saying, you know, my book, it's finished, it's going to be published, uh, and I thought the timing is just perfect. We've known each other for years, and, you know, I think this is really going to be, you are one of the only people, university uh, researcher, you've been working, you know, on the period between 89 and, and today. So tell us a little bit at Cambridge, why did you want to uh, do your thesis on contemporary photography. Thank you so much and congratulations on your exhibit. I can't wait to see it. I'm here. I'm so happy to be here. As Michel said, uh, this is uh, uh, my book that brings me to Paris. But the question, you know, what is the history of uh, French photography in France? Uh, I've, I've been thinking about it for about 10 years. So I, I've been working on this book that was, is an extension of my thesis. Uh, I'm just going to be brief. I know we don't have a lot of time. So this uh, book, uh, I started writing it because French photography is absent uh, from world history of photography. It's mostly in an Anglophone context that we explore this uh, media, and I wanted to fill this gap, and so I wrote in English, and this project it's for an English-speaking uh, public to give them a history, well, subjective history. I think that's the appropriate word. A subjective history of French photography over the past 50 years, so from the 1960s, 70s to today. And it's a summary uh, you know, um, decade by decade that allowed me to reveal uh, convergence uh, during themes, uh, convergence between themes uh, and subjects. For example, Depardon, that's exactly what I discovered in my research and in writing uh, and in presenting this book decade by decade. So the photographers who wouldn't normally be linked or wouldn't normally have any type of relationship, um, this really, the, this study allowed me to link them for other reasons. If you put their images um, side by side, you can see themes, common themes, uh, and there's a common thread that you can notice. So in a world history of photography, you know, in a history of France, by analyzing those, I think that you have a more complete picture, uh, obviously. Uh, what took place during those years? I forgot to show you some of my slides. Let me show you something. For example, if we're looking at world history of color photography, we also have to discuss uh, Dolores Arad, for example, French photographers, Bernard Plossu, Guy Bourdin. I mean, I felt that it was important to fill those gaps uh, with regard to the social identity. Uh, photography. I wanted to mention Mohamed Lorissa and Laura Eno, who's here in the, in the audience. This is her work. It's important uh, to discuss that in as post colonial photography. So I see these projects. Uh, as part of an important trend of decolonizing and decentralizing 
uh, French photography, and that really it expands the world canons of photography. So we have studies between artistic practices and French philosophy. It shows that, for example, uh, in meeting the beauty of the minds with photography, Roland Barthes, Jacques Cantière. It's a beautiful portrait by Louis Canavas of Jacques Cantière. So these ideas gave us a point of reference for artistic practices, and it created a sort of dialogue between art, philosophy, images, text, and this dialogue really um, enriching, uh, makes both aspects that more uh, rich. So intellectualism defined the French experience in the period that we're discussing. But my goal at the outset was to go beyond just a national level to to take this photography to a really uh, an international global level for example to to create a bridge between culture and to move back and forth between them so this is the point of view of, of, of an outsider you know i wrote as a foreigner someone who, whose native language is neither French nor English. And I think that that allowed me to move French photography from its place in the national context, move it outward and uh, examine things that might have been odd for a French uh, public. But the fact that uh, being an outsider, the fact of being a foreigner, um, I think uh, was a very positive one. And as an outsider, I can obviously see uh, what is lacking in official histories. For example, world history of photography, for example, in France and elsewhere. Today we see lots of attempts to uh, fill these gaps. And in my book, I wanted to present an equal number of women and men photographers. And it's not always easy, it was not easy. We could talk about that uh, a little bit, I think. And so that was one of the, uh, the principles that guided my selection. My list also includes well-known, excuse me, lesser-known uh, artists, artists who are not uh, very well-known outside of France. Sylvester Lebert, for example. For example. So I use this as the opportunity to, to re-examine their work and to find new interpretations. For example, Sylvester Lebert, who's well known for her work uh, uh, during armed conflict, you know, of landscapes and scenery, but I wanted to bring out the theme of ecology, for example. So landscapes uh, is used to examine important issues, like the colonial past or the modernization and uh, the preservation of the environment. So the theme of the environment is a link to my current project. So studying landscape representations in art uh, and contemporary art. So my book will be uh, uh, launched at uh, the Jeu de Paume bookstore with Stephen Gelden and David Bates. So you are welcome to participate tomorrow and I would look forward to seeing you. I'd like to give the floor to Louise. So, Bibliothèque Nationale de France, the French National Library, we obviously know some of their collections, but what about a representation of French photography and scientific projects? 
So the collection, the question of the presence of photographers working in France in their collections is structured around two major hubs, the presence in the collections and the presence in exhibitions, because exhibitions at the French BNF library are supposed to uh, highlight what's in the collections. Of course, it is the French National Library, so there is a, a, a focus on French photography, but also when you talk about libraries, we talk about encyclopedia and universalism. And so because of that, we, in the BNF's collections, we have photography in every, all of its different dimensions, artists, fine art photography, but also press photography, fashion photography, scientific photography, amateur photography or vernacular photography, and all of that gives a certain typology which distinguishes the BNF from a museum. We're a library and a museum, but we are still a, a library. So there is a represent, representation of photography without exclusion and a universalism that the gaze of the, of the curators that have uh, come through the uh, stamps and photography department, their gazes have contributed to create a way of looking at French photography with, alongside American, Japanese, European photography, Latin American photography, and so on. The photography is taken in a very varied way. I've put a few examples. I'll just kind of go over them quickly. I have to show you all of the images here, but or, or commentate on them. Some acquisitions that have been done by the BNF, uh, that we acquire works, uh, well, we, for, we work for, we have a, a BNF specificity for collecting French works by photographers working in France, and we have a special uh, legal way of acquiring them which is like, a, uh, there's a legal and uh, since 1925 and even stronger in 1943, we had to put one shot of example in a public archive. So we have a kind of multiplicity and, and, and that is structured with different acquisitions, like with, with uh, big names and uh, different kinds of photography, with landscape photography, portraits. And, and in the collection, the materiality, for example, when I got to the BNF in 2014, the Matière, Ombre and Fiction uh, book that was uh, released in the 90s was my uh, road book on materiality. I looked in photographers that were brought, whose work was brought in early on, like Denis Bria, Jean-Pierre Sud, who really wanted to explore the medium in its materiality. Shadows, the question of the uh, black and white and photography and literature with works, the series Anatopy by Arno Lesage, whose work came into the collection with Anne Le Mini was running the department. And then there was Anne-Lise Broyer, uh, whose work was brought into the collection 27 when we were working on uh, landscapes. Marc Blanchet as well. So a few recent uh, acquisitions for the collections that show that diversity, which 
looks at photography in France and not just French photography, which is different. This image in Israel Arigno, who is Spanish photographer, but has been in France for 10 years, talks about through and through residences in France, he's enriching his work. In a, in a remarkable way. Donations, the purchases and donations all go into this legal framework, Depot Legal, and enrich the collections. For the exhibitions, with regards to the exhibitions, I agree, Michelle, with what you were saying about the importance of the collective dimension, which creates a network between different photographers' gazes. And that was the case for the French Landscapes exhibition, Paysage Francais. J'espère qu'il va vite retrouver sa famille. Euh, voilà, donc je, la, la, exposition, the exhibition uh, en fait, came euh, back at, at, as, as the starting Dattar, point of the Dattar photographic mission, which Raphael Boitel, who was a co-curator with me on this exhibition, uh, was de, the, de, the de subject of his thesis. And we went from this experience of landscape and the commission from Data to show the, initi the personal initiatives by photographers and those of collectives that came together to create a, a certain gaze on the French countryside. Like French, such as French territoire. France is a, uh, a country where there are a lot of artists, residents, and a lot of commissions. I'll come back on that. And all of that was an opportunity to look at 40 years of, uh, of, of photographers' gaze on the French landscape. Iba Floria Collective, de Pardon, but Jürgen Jevsker's work, or Gilles Leimdorfer's work, Thibaut Fouisset. On the collective, uh, the, the idea of collective works, what I want to say is that, of course, it's important to have a strong a highlight of presenting French photography, like uh, in the Metamorphosis uh, exhibition. I am really looking forward to seeing it as well. But questioning photography in France and its history is also about the visibility given to those photographers working in France. The collective dimension interests me particularly because of the international dimension we're going to give to French photography. What allows the BNF's collection it, it, what, what it allows us to do is shows that for French photography or for all photographers working in France has its shows that it has its place in an international history of photography, which is Olga Smith's your book shows very admirably as well. In an exhibition like Noir et Blanc, I put some images from the exhibition as we presented it, my, my colleagues and I. Flora Tribel at the Grand Palais two years ago. It's an exhibition that was a bit sacrificed because sacrificed because of COVID, but, but we will be re-exhibiting it at the BNF in uh, autumn 23. We want to show uh, French photographers in dialogue with international photographers. So contrast here, Valérie Belin dialoguing with Charles Herbut, with Robert Frank, Otto Steiner, Tony Brimmer, and that dialogue really 
really made that visibility um, uh, present. We have collective, uh, so collective exhibitions and also exhibitions of uh, prizes from different awards, the pre nieps We've been a partner since 1955, pre Nadar, the printing prize, Prix du Tirage, thanks to the partnership we together with the Collège International de Photographie de Grand Paris, that you are, of which you are the president, uh, Michel, and it allows us to give visibility and show the, the different ex fields of experimentation of photographers working in France and, and the, the scale of that and the, the broad, the, how broad that is. What you said, a couple of things are very important in the, the contributions that you both have through your work. The first is, uh, Eloise, that you brought up, is that to create dialogues between photographers in France. I say French because you say that a photographer living in America is Amer with an American photographer. So, of course, we have photographers coming from many different countries living here in France and participate into French photography. It's a, it's a detail in some ways, but there are dialogues that need to be established between different cultural sensibilities and artistic sensibilities that are unique to artists, but can be shared through themes, different sensitivities, we have some overlap to see how. So how can we create dialogue between uh, Greek, uh, German, Italian, American photography? If we show these the unique power of each artist, is it difficult to make these demonstrations worth trying? Because when we create uh, dialogues with different corpus, such as to see how they relate to each other, that's the first point. And then one of the really important uh, contributions of Olga's book, to me, is, is a double importance. Firstly, taken frontally in your title, between theory and practice, each chapter you've seen in Olga Smith's book. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Je vais prendre celui-là, peut-être. In August, the book is this perspective, radical perspective. Each chapter, each decade is put under the umbrella of a great philosopher. That means something. When we're talking about French photography. We're talking about photographers and environments that are crystallized philosophical um, perspectives. And, and, and I'm very happy that there is a book written by a foreign colleague that says it. Because in France, when you say things like that, we said, yes, that's very intellectual. No, photographers. Uh, they work and they think. Maybe they're too literary, too philosophical. But that's what's interesting. And that's what's maybe very different with, with, uh, to Anglo-Saxon photographers. And a different philosophy. Something else very important that you said was that photography in France is crossed through by big international questions and issues. You said it, colonial issues. Uh, climate, ecology, feminism, these big societal debates have their place. And we, we highlight what's happening in a national uh, context with its international speeches. And as we're talking about the ecology, in contemporary photography creation, something is happening with the big issues of society and something happening within photography. We're very happy to have photography, photographic works. And that's 
coming to, into being now, kind of a history that is less less about authors and less about being individuals, but maybe big questions about the form as well as, as the conveying ideas. And maybe it's a kind of photography which is profoundly linked to philosophy and literature. Maybe our photography is less easy to access Maybe not always, but sometimes things that seems are obvious are not so obvious, and that and they're interesting when you dive into them. Thank you, Michelle. Very true. To come back to that idea about what stories might be a question for you, but for the public. You have to maybe ask from what perspective do we hear this history? The question of who's talking, we could during, during the conversation we had with Martagini in 2018, we noticed that the direction of, on, on the direction of Marta Gilly, what was shown at Jeu de Pommes, had changed a lot with this trend to put a, a shine a spotlight on photography. I don't want to to be too uh, identitarian. Okay. There's, when there's a woman who is a woman in charge and women photographers are coming into the museum, there's something linked to identity here. You have to ask who, who is behind and whose perspective is this history. Uh, photography that's being presented, whose perspective is it coming from? I quite agree that it's important to know who uh, is talking and sujet, who is doing uh, things. I would like to come back to Michelle, what you said. I'm not too uh, modest about French photography or photography made in France, but when you say photography made in France, it's, been, it's very easy for us to say German photography or Italian or Swiss photography, Finnish photography, because in the end, there was a kind of a discourse that was marked in a unequivocal way in those countries, which is not at all the case in France. British photography is social photography, German photography is the Dusseldorf School, and the proof of that, that, that question about German photography, I was rather stunned to see at the great exhibition on East German photography was done in 2019 by Sonia Voss. We discovered, we rediscovered all that photography. I was, Sonia Voss came at the BNF, to the BNF, so was, that Eastern, East German photography was already at the BNF because Jean-Claude Lemany had was intel, intelligent enough to be really look everywhere and be curious about everything and had that universalism, that encyclopedic attitude. So very early on, compared to other other, even without he acquired a lot of women photographers' work without even thinking about it. Where a colleague and I are researching what works we have by female photographers, we realized that way back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, he worked from women and men uh, without paying attention too much. It was intuitive through his curiosity for the photographic medium. Déjà, ce qui justifie pour moi cette question that justifies de, that 
question la of saying French and in France, if there is a, a unified uh, identity for a French photography, that would be something that the French government, in relationship with critics, historians, have never favored one school of photography. And wanting to have a kind of a cultivated and referenced literary philosophical discourse which characterizes photography in France and, and in fact French photography because it's very referenced compared to what, referring to what France is, which is literature, the staging that we've talked about French theory for many years. I think all of that has fed and nourished certain vision and a difficulty for the international for internationally to uh, really get a, the head around what is in fact what defines French photography what do you think is very important when there's a national discourse which is about a practice for Germany it's so obvious with the dust of the school but it's perhaps more strategic when you've decided to say that something was French songs and defend it to export it. You covered all styles of song. You have text, uh, really, uh, singers which were really focused on their texts and their lyrics. So reducing this to a style, all practice, all kinds of practices are interesting, of interest to me, and we must keep them in the dialogue. But it's almost a political act and st strategic act. But let's be careful not to boil it down to uh, photography. It will just be in France, it will just be reportage or or final. Olga, when you investigated and met all the people in French photography in France, did you feel that it was divided in personalities, certain styles and ideas? Did you feel it was all fractured? I'm so foreign, maybe, for this context that I wasn't too affected. I did notice, but this kind of what struck me, really, I'm very far from this idea of identifying a French style, this kind of Frenchness as an essence. It's a utopic idea. I, first page, I, I just say it's not my project. But this idea of finding a connection between the intellectual discourse and the ima images, that was one way of saying that, yes, something is quite specific to, to France. That's what I noticed in my conversations with French artists. They read a lot outside of their own speciality. They often read you know, Barthes and Jacques Ancière. And I wanted to use that as, as, as one of the, the aspects of photography in France. We have a little bit of time left. Are there questions in the audience or any comments? Should we pass the microphone around or how, how will this work? Should I pass mine around? Hello. I would like to get back to something that Michel Provert evoked. He mentioned, my question is for all three of you. What do you think of the idea or the concept of uh, uh, plastic arts uh, photography? Is this useful? Should we use this type of term? 
photography with the plastic arts with other media. I think it's interesting because, no, this term is not used elsewhere. Um, but it's, it's a term and an idea that uh, is very widespread, uh, has, is wide, widely used uh, with critics and art historians. So it's kind of is out of the context of uh, the reportage. So I don't know. This term, uh, I was quite, uh, I was angry about this, this idea for quite a while, about this concept. And a lot of critics were, no, they thought that it was useful. But uh, I agree that you can't always be 100% against something that works. So I think that that allowed us to put a name, put a term on something that does exist um, internationally that, yeah, that doesn't make much sense in other language, perhaps. Um, but, and I think this is my art historian reflex, I think it's like a, a beautiful historic object. It's, a, there's, there's, it's, it's kind of a residual, like a vestige. And I think that this is a, a semantic um, thing that allowed us to describe photography. There are expressions that uh, those are, that are most often successful are, are kind of empty concepts and expressions. They're kind of empty shells that allow, that, that we can fill actually with what we'd like to fill them with. And so I guess it's kind of a 1980s expression. It's a little bit vintage at this point. What do you think? Yeah, I really, I agree. I think that it's more of a, and a comfortable and easy notion on Claude Humani uh, use the expression creative photography. I think it's almost it's a practical term, I guess. Um, photography d'auteur, we talk about allowed us to uh, create a dialogue between uh, photographic arts and, 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 and the artist creating the photograph. It's, it kind of allowed us to create a term that a lot of to examine maybe two fields that are distinct, uh, for example. Ah, this week, or maybe it was last week. I was reading an interview with uh, Sophia Lucia Hubert in Telerama. And she said, uh, no, I'm not a photographer, I'm an artist. So already this this desire uh, and this this will to you know define oneself as as different that the that the photographic uh, practice is, is plural in fact and the fact that she defined herself uh, as an artist um, allowed you know the larger public to maybe understand that I don't know if it's widely used today, but it, it was, you know, it was um, widely used at that time. So that's a very French term, and it's impossible to translate. And yes, the interpreter agrees. Uh, it's plastic arts, which in English doesn't make much sense. But to be a little more serious, this idea also to give you a little bit of an international context and bring that to this discussion, if we talked about uh, in an anglophone context, conversations always get back to market or, you know, everything's very uh, uh, neatly and tightly uh, linked to markets. When we're talking about photography, as soon as something is featured in a museum or becomes uh, big, so Michael Fried, for example, in his book, and, and 
It's not the concept of the, you know, the plastic arts, huh? Uh, why Photography Matters More Than Ever Before is the title. And the problem I found with that is that we're completely stuck on this idea of whether photography is worth more or less than painting, for example. It's kind of a dead-end conversation. It's pointless. Uh, but when we use that term, you know, uh, uh, photography as an, as an art, uh, that maybe allows it to enter into the conversation differently. I think it makes more sense to me to call that art photography or non-art photography. Actually, the term I believe is fine art photography. So my response to Bruno Chalifou, so to talk about the very French context, yes, this was the title of an essay that was very successful. Okay, we, we cited it, uh, we quoted it. But let's remember that the French nation after 68 needed a term to take the place of Beaux-Arts, uh, and they used a plastique. So they needed a definition and they needed a name. So everything outside of that fine arts context is plastic art. For example, does photography belong in the contemporary art domain sphere? So I don't know. I never really thought about it, but I think that, that that's kind of how I would answer. Are there other questions? Hello. Hello. Thank you. I have a question on um, photography in a university setting when we talked about East, photographs of Eastern Germany. And if I remember correctly, a lot of the photographers uh, were uh, had studied at we, in either one or another of the photography schools in East Germany. Is that am I mistaken or? In France, I believe that the, the question of uh, photography schools and teaching is a little bit different because we have photographers who are trained uh, in fine arts schools or uh, art décoratif or specific uh, schools of photography, for example, the Gobelins or the Côte d'Arme. So, photographers who teach do have a certain way uh, of, uh, of teaching. But I think that in France, this, the question of uh, the of influence or affiliation is, 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 is different. I know that we can have a or Steinhardt, or we can have for the Leipzig School, for example, a representative of Leipzig School. We have representative of the Dusseldorf School. We don't necessarily have that uh, among the French uh, photography professors. Uh, for example, I still meet photographers today who talk about them, Christian Milovanov, Anna Klaas, who really taught an entire generation, um, but did not influence them to uh, a point that they are, you know, following in their footsteps. Patrick Dezany at the Beaux-Arts School in Paris. I think that things are very more uh, nuanced. I don't know if I uh, oui, en fait, uh, agree with me. Yeah. So, are we talking about a école school? Are we talking about the teaching uh, institution, or are we talking about a style? You know, in, in art history, maybe it's a more classic, uh, classical uh, a term. You know, the school of the Dusseldorf School, for example, as an art historian. After Chastel, 
We don't. We haven't talked like that since since Chastel. So, uh, because photography is a form of contemporary art, I don't think you know that we. Uh, want to attribute a style, for example, and use the, the school of. No, I think that that's quite reactionary uh, in art history today. But to get back to school as an institution, obviously decisions are made in art schools, in photographic practice. We talked about the Gobelin uh, and Arles and Louis Lumière and some other schools that are more private or lesser known, but also as important. But we don't necessarily have, and even for the Arles School, when we wanted to celebrate the 30, 30th anniversary of the Ecole uh, d'Arles, and so they, they did kind of this terrible play on words with art school and Arles School. So, so when you say the Ecole d'Arles, uh, that it was a, it was in this artistic sense, it just it didn't it didn't work. So I think that the French style. I want to get back to you know this idea of um, a heterogeneous scene, and that's how the French scene has been. Um, if we were reporters, it would be easy, but we had type of a, a more widespread use of uh, we have someone signing a book of so he's a reporter, rise him like that. No, he does uh, larger exhibits, he does, no, these photographic uh, categories and, and, and categorization of photographers, it's just so different today. I think that it's, um, it's been exciting, this, you know, this scrambling, this mixing of categories. That's what's been very exciting in, in this whole um, space. I agree with you. It's a concept that, that we really need to forget. It doesn't make much sense today. It kind of, I believe it limits um, rather than opening uh, the discipline uh, today to other things. Now, things are wider and, and more open today, I believe, you know, versus uh, trends and, and schools 20 years ago. If we have time for another question do we have time no i think we're a little bit over yes okay that's unfortunate no no regrets thank you so much thank you so much for being here